In this video, we'll look at how to make our GraphQL queries more flexible and reusable using variables. We'll also show how to construct an HTTP request body from a third-party application to send the query and variables. When we run this query to get our case with the hard-coded sysid as a parameter, we see that it works and we get back this output. To enable this query to receive parameters, we must use the query keyword. It's no longer optional. Following that, we'll add the function name of the query that's expecting the variable followed by parentheses containing the variable name, colon, and type. In this case, it's dollar sign my ID. We recognize the variable because it starts with a dollar sign. If multiple variables are being passed, they're comma-separated. Inside the query, we simply cut the hard-coded sysid and replace it with dollar sign my ID. Now, down in the lower left of the GraphQL Explorer, we'll click Variables and open this panel. Here we enter the JSON name value pairs for our variables. For this example, we have my ID and the sysid we just copied to the buffer. Although it's rather anticlimactic, when we run the query, it shows the same result as before, proving our new variable-driven query works exactly the same. The advantage now is instead of saving a new query or constructing the query at runtime using code, we can simply replace the variable value and get a different record. Now, one technical note. So far, we've been using the GraphQL Explorer to send our requests from the client to the server and getting a result back. But what exactly is happening? In an earlier video, we learned that GraphQL is an HTTP-based protocol. The client is sending an HTTP post with the query as the request payload. The payload has a property named query, whose value is the content we've been using in the GraphQL Explorer. For example, our last query would look something like this if tabs and extra spaces and new lines were removed. In addition, Variables are passed in as a variables property of that object. However, because the variable object itself includes quotes, those need to be escaped to avoid syntax errors. So the variables property has these extra backslashes before the inner quotes. We'll see more of this later in the video GraphQL in Action. That's it! We've seen how variables are passed in a client query, making our queries much more flexible and reusable, and I hope you'll join me in the next video for more ways to make your queries easier to build and maintain.